Hi, it's been a while since I've done a video, as in like three months while. The last video was in London, so a lot of things happened in the space of time that I didn't do anything. Like Halloween happened and I did nothing. Uh, a lot, a lot of things happened. A lot of things are different. But unfortunately, no Christmas video this year. So this video I've been working on for a long time since the summer. Uh, so this video is going to be all about fish, but not normal fish. Fish that don't act like fish by going onto land and breathing air and doing things that fish don't do. <laughs> so before I actually start talking about these land fish, uh, I need to get some things out of the way, like things that characterize fish and also the evolution of fish and how they made the transfer to land all those million years ago. <clears throat> so these things that I'm about to say will be important later on in the video to remember. So the first one being fish have a specialized organ called a swim bladder. And a swim bladder is basically a big sack, like a balloon inside their body. And they can fill this up with air like a balloon and it can expand to gain more buoyancy or it can kind of get smaller. Like, you know, when it's filled with air, it floats. And then when it's it, like lungs, which later on we're talking about a fish that has lungs, this part will be very important. So think about if you're swimming, you need to inhale a load of air so that, number one, you can breathe, but also so that your lungs are filled up with air so that you can be more buoyant and flow. Bony skeleton, not a cartilaginous skeleton or no skeleton at all. With warm blood. The lateral line, which is a sensory organ. And bones. Skeleton at all and a, a water habitat, so they live underwater. The first but fish or vertebrate the fish doesn't need to have ever every walk single one of these traits is to be the a fish. Tickling so fish can them. live on land, like we're going to see in this video, or they might not have scales, but they all scales, fins. So now we're going to talk about how fish evolved onto land, which will be somewhat important when you're talking about fish that are alive. So the Tiktaalik, which was one of the first animals, if not the first vertebrate, vertebrate to ever walk onto and land. They're basically a lobe-finned fish. Remember lobe-finned fishes for later in the video. So instead of just having rays of fins, like you've got the rod and then the membrane that connects the rods together. I'll put a picture somewhere here. And instead of having ray fins, lobe fin fishes have nearly an arm, and then they've got the ray. I'll put a picture of a lobe fin fish. Like other fish nowadays, of course they did a like other fish nowadays, the Tiktaalik had a swim bladder, but this swim bladder was specialized and was used more like a lung. So it could fill up with air and produce oxygen so it could breathe on land. Now, Tiktaaliks couldn't survive forever on land because, of course, they're a fish. 
So, so with all that, there's a way walk we can walk around, start talking, and kind of about the fish themselves. And all the that stuff I just said will definitely make in the long all this I'm trying to say make more sense. But the, of course, they did need to go back to the water eventually. But after millions and millions and millions of years of evolution, they met, eventually came to amphibians like Ichthyostega, which had proper limbs. So the first fish we're going to be talking about is the pleco. Plecos are really common aquarium fish. They're a type of sucker mouth catfish, and I actually own a bristlenose plecostomus in my aquarium. So plecos come in a lot of different forms, and they're really, some of them, not all of them, some of them are really pretty and gorgeous, like the zebra pleco or the bulldog pleco or rubber nose plecos. They come in a lot of variety. They're kept in aquariums mostly for the reason that some people think that they're a cleaner fish. But this is not the case, sense. as they get really big. So when we're talking like, some of them get like a we're going to start long with the really big. least extreme. And they also, they can if you're looking for a fish that's least going to clean your tower, the least eat coolest, all the other fish waste. And then leading up to the most this extreme, pleco is going to the opposite of that. Like, because plecos release a lot of waste. So if you want a pleco, you shouldn't want it for the reason to clean your tank, more so just for the reason to have it as a fish you like, or just as simply a pet rather than a cleaning fish. Fish. But for this reason of them getting huge and also causing damage to not properly cycled fish tanks, a lot of people are like, I'm done with this fish. This thing's a nuisance. So they take it out of the tank and the throw it into a nearby lake or pond or river. And eventually these will just fish breed and become invasive. And to just the oxygen must be get really for their guilt just to to breathe invade it. whole water systems and will take over. As this as these fish, they do breed quite easily, and since they're so popular in the aquarium industry, like so many have so many people have them, they just, you know, blow up. Not literally, but you get what I mean. And to, especially in places like Florida. Of these fish come the from South America, and, and Florida has very similar tropical environments to South America. A giant snake so, particularly is one of the most beautiful invasive in is these big rainstorms happen, waterways can flood and expand, and, and the plecos can take advantage of this by crossing these like and getting to other. On them, like rainbow. It's really, really pretty. Plecos can survive over a day out of water and they have a really tough armor on around their body. Instead of having scales, they're just a big plates of armor. Like These fish are really dangerous to ecosystems. And this they aren't native to juices water. They're heavily predatory. So they they can't live they're super aggressive skin. skin. They've got huge teeth. Just like they're, a snake. They've, the reason they have the name snakehead is because 
they have a head that looks like a python. So these fish are, they'll eat anything that can fit in their mouth. really really pretty so similar to the pleco the snakehead is invasive in not just florida but a lot of other the next places. fish we're talking about of course like the pleco where they are kept just like fish tanks other two tanks is an invasive species most of the snakeheads that are invasive come from asian food markets and they just escape and of course these fish are much better than plecos at surviving a land as they can, these fish can fish are often a day so they, and like a snake, they can slither on land to get to another water body if it dries up or just becomes uninhabitable. Snakeheads have a special chamber next to their gills that can absorb air by gulping in water and it holds air for them to breathe. And they can also enter a state of torpor, which is basically a dormant Some of the reasons they might they can just come onto the land is, like I said, to find a new body of water if or to look under ice or something really cold. So if the water freezes over, they can just hibernate. Not really hibernation, but similar they just go dormant and you know slow down their body and they can survive out of water for up to four days it's a species but and these fish are really successful the next fish is the climbing in other environments that they are native to due to their really impressive ability to If they're in moist conditions, like it's raining, for example, they can cover they can 1 1.2 kilometers on weeks. land, with so they can just keep slithering ability. Their they, bodies are really long, fins, which are and slender, side fins, and their fins, these are like fins are really strong, dorsal and like fins, are they use these like arms small to flatter, so that push themselves, it helps along. them when slithering on land. Their body is very like a snake if it had a flat, ugly face with a bunch of The next fish is actually a shark. So this shark there's is a scientific name, land, so which all animals have a scientific This shark is not like an English great white shark the or walking bull catfish shark. is scientific. So you don't have to start looking for the shark. They're not hoping, but worrying that a great white shark with legs is going to run out of it. It roughly translates these sharks to lively frogs. Run with legs, which as they have these with their very muscular basically instant early amphibian. Dream. A lot of these animals push themselves along millions of years if they're alive in millions of years, could evolve into this climbing garami. The climbing garami takes the word climbing really literally because these sharks they can live actually in rock climb pools or tide pools, depending on what you these call them. These fish are, somebody, they may try to escape these pools of course, if the water becomes stagnant they're also invasive. or there's no oxygen in the Unfortunately, they'll just climb out of this They're invasive in Australia pool, and just try and to find they just, pool, or just they go back into the ocean itself. They can walk 30 meters on land with their pectoral fins, which are definitely noticeably more muscular compared to other similarly related sharks, like the nurse shark.
in dry times they can climb or not climb dig underground again with these super strong pectoral fins and they can just dig down to find like underground there's pockets of water or moisture so they'll dig down and try to find these and just stay In Asia or Africa, where there's lots of predatory animals, some farmers paint eyes on the back of cows to stop tigers or lions from approaching them from behind, because the tiger or the lion will see these eye spots and think that the cow is actually like the other way around, watching them, but really they're just painted on the back. So that's what these eye spots on epaulette sharks are thought to be for, which is also where they get their name, epaulette, which is a shoulder thing that some soldiers wear in a pretty goofy way. Hoosh. Hoosh. These sharks can survive so this the fish is called the mud skipper, which is so probably the most popular. They won't be getting well to your head on the slip. So you can sleep nice. They can live outside of water no for two fish. days. No sharks. And their pectoral again. fins, like again, the side fins, they've got a special bone and it's nearly like an elbow joint. It's actually a joint that allows them to bend their fins and they can really walk quite well with these. These fish are mostly found in mangroves, swamps, beaches, or marshes. So the way they, they survive, course, on they don't live too far in their heart rate. And these are saltwater fish. They restrict blood fish. flow to their brain, so they can survive with slightly lower levels of. They're three feet long, and you may know they also open their mouths super wide, and just they've got a huge, huge their big weird black spot on their, their side. And two males just near their clash at each other with these big mouths. And this, they big really black do look spot. like toads. Nobody They're really frogs. knew what it was for like their eyes at the time, or just but it's taught on the very top of them. It may be sort of an eye spot. Bulbous. So eye spots are really, really strange. A lot of animals, and it's basically a huge eye. And it's supposed to deter predators, as it may look like the animal. It's really smaller, or might not be able to see the predator from behind. But it looks like the two big spots, it looks like the animal is looking at them. And the final fish on this list that is real. because they are so well adapted for land they like these fish have been around for like 400 million years so they're doing a lot of things right to stay alive that long so the lungfish is definitely out of all the fish in the world not just this list the best adapted for land now we're on our second last fish which this is This list. These are a type of go. Inside this sack is moisture and water and oxygen. If they're in a moist environment, they can absorb water through their skin or through the lining of their mouth. Hmm. 
male mud skippers Long jump fish two feet high amphibians off the ground seeds. to attract females. And seed pods. So of course they basically if eat everything. Say for the like human equivalent, they're, they're omnivores. If so they're really a not man big. jumps. They're either really like small as well, so fifteen they don't have the feet off the ground. Right. So they're more than that's definitely going common. to the catch the attention of definitely someone. So it it's probably under. on the planet. On the subject of their eyes, similarly to a chameleon, their eyes can move independently and look like in I mentioned, directions. there's Just really like three main groups. So these fish, fish are really hard to fin catch slash bony fish by predators, which are especially like goldfish and these uh, since these guys are the top like salmon, salmon and bass. All the get you know, fish that have bumped three sixty view of a Then there's the cartilaginous fish. Which can so includes ratfish. They're, they're really sharks, fast sea. rays, whale sharks, all of those, which have skeletons made of cotton. On this list that is actual this is and then really the lobe finned fish. Take which they do have skeletons just like the bony fish, but their fins are like they aren't ray fins. I'll put some pictures around of like a lobe fin, where it's basically what the name suggests. Uh as an arm, earlier. not an arm, but kind of and an arm. These, and then it's got along with the tick, so the like, fin around it. These were some of the first. Lungfish can survive on out of water. I'm not going to say land, but out of water for up to a year. So if their pool dries up, as these fish, fish, as these fish live in dry parts of Africa, or South America, or Australia, their pools that they live in often so dry up. Like and subscribe. So when this happens, I hope to see you they burrow see down, like really, very happy Christmas, and secrete Bye. a mucus layer.